All right, guys, back here again with another in my series of games with strange, unusual, or complicated controls. And today we have the big daddy of them all, uh, Temple of Abshai. This game came out on a number of computers, including I think it was the TRS-80. Might have been one of the first. Um, Commodore 64 came a little bit later and it introduced a little bit updated graphics, um, some more sound, and I think in the original game you had to like do a lot of stuff on like pen and paper because the computer couldn't handle it. The Commodore 64 I think handles more of it. But anyway, um, it's going to be a unique video, one I've been excited about because this is a game that you had to play with the instruction manual up next to you. So. Um, we're going to start by actually taking a peek through this. Um, and this was the same instruction manual regardless of which computer system you had it on. And then you would have a reference card, which should be um, at the bottom of the screen here, that showed you which keys you needed to press on that particular computer. If you're playing, you know, Apple II or Commodore 64 or whatever you were on. So let's take a look at the manual. Um, 1982, this game came out the year I was born, and it looks like, yeah, TRS-80, I think, I, well, okay, let's see, TRS-80, Apple, Atari, IBM, yeah, okay, and scroll through, I used to actually just flip through this book and read it again and again and again big long introduction about what role-playing games are, uh, explains what your stats are, strength, constitution, dexterity, intelligence, those should all sound very familiar. Instead of wisdom, it says intuition, and instead of charisma, it says ego. And it gives you a little bit of explanation as to what the stats do, but doesn't give you any numbers, so it's hard to know what exactly your stats do in this game. Um, how important is it to have high stats? How much do you get out of it? Um, it actually encourages you that if you've played other games that are compatible to go ahead and bring them over. And even if you were playing on like a tabletop D&D game, you could take your character and import them into this game because it, there's an option to just add your, game, your character in. The one problem being that there's not really any magic in this game. So if you're playing a magic user or a cleric, then It'd be pretty well pointless. Um, so yeah, it shows you how to generate a character, how to enter and exit the dungeon. This is a lot of stuff I'll just show you as we go. Um, tons of commands. Um, I'll keep going here. You get tired in the game, especially if you are wearing armor that's too heavy for you or using a heavy weapon. Um, sometimes you'll have to actually slow down and rest. And I think you get more fatigue also if you're wounded. And then you have your health is on a percentage scale. So once you have 0% less of wounds, then you've been killed. And then if you do die, um, if your body is found by a monster first, your character is lost forever. But some of the other characters will actually drag you back to town and get you resurrected. And some will... Um, take some of your money, some will take some of your magic items, some will take all of your stuff, but at least you'll be alive. Um, there's lots of illustrations in the manual, as you can tell. And, and then there's even this short little fiction thing about Brian Hammerhand. I always enjoyed reading that. And then it also tells you the backstory of the dungeon that you're going into really long but not really necessary basically it's just like a cult of insect worshippers that um created this temple in a pit and eventually they were wiped out and then eventually many years later people heard about the treasure that they had in their temple and they started digging it out and trying to get in there to steal the treasure uh let's list all the monsters quite a few of them are from dungeons and dragons and then this is where it gets kind of interesting. It lists the traps and what they do. 
Um, so I think in the game it might just say Lily Trap, and then you actually have to read this text in your manual to figure out what happened. And then there are the treasures of Abshai, um, so level one, which we'll be playing. It's really weird because I can see all the treasures that are in the dungeon already. Um, so as I'm playing, um, it will just tell me, you found treasure T01 or something, or just 01. And it might say like lilies, but it won't tell me what the importance of it is. So that you actually have to open the manual and look at what it says. Um, so it's got all four levels. It tells you how much money each is worth. Again, I think in one of the versions, like the TRS-80 version, at the end it would tell you how many small diamonds you got, how many small emeralds you got, whatever. And then you had to actually like get out a calculator and add them up yourself and tell the game how much money you earned while you were in the dungeon. So you could just lie if you wanted to, which it just blows my mind. There's some magic items that we might find in the dungeon. And then here, this is the part that blows my mind. Uh, so the game is shown on a very basic map. It shows your character, it shows enemies. Uh, once you enter a room, though, if you want to know what the room looks like, you actually open up the manual and read the passage for that room. So we're going to leave this open as we play so we know what the rooms look like. Uh, again, lots of illustrations. And this is a good portion of the manual because there are four dungeons and I think there is something around 60 rooms in each level of the dungeon. Um, so it was quite a bit like playing Dungeons and Dragons by yourself. Um, pretty interesting. All right, well, I think <clears throat> well, I think we'll go ahead and uh, load up the actual game here. All right, guys, I am starting up a new game here of Temple of Abshai. I did make one attempt at playing the game. Um, I took the stats that the innkeeper gave me. They were bad. I think the highest one was a 13. I wondered if I can actually play and enjoy the game that way. And basically, I got killed repeatedly. The first creature I even fought knocked me down to 50% health. So that was actually not a lot of fun. Um, so what I decided to do instead is go back and roll my own stats. And I'll show you um, how that works, because the game allows you to basically um, choose your own stats, which you could use for cheating. All right, so restore a game of progress. No. Do you have a character on disk? Yes, but I'm not using it. Should I find you one? No, 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 because the characters this guy finds for you are terrible. Okay. And then you're allowed to enter your own stats. So if you rolled up your own D&D &D character, or if you just wanted to... Um, if you were, like, playing a campaign back in the day, this would have been, like, way old-school D&D. So either White Box or... Maybe first edition AD and D, um, but if you rolled up a character or had a character in a campaign, you could bring them over to the game through this way. So actually, we're going to put a sixteen in for intelligence and a thirteen in for wisdom, an eleven for ego. Um, that's the least important one. I'm not going to be talking to a lot of monsters or bartering for equipment too much. Strength is 18. Constitution, I'm going to put a 13. I'm not sure if it's a good idea or not, but... And then dexterity is 17. All right, we'll go ahead and do zero experience. And then I will give myself 200 silver, which seems to be about the upper reach I've ever seen you be able to start with, so 200 silver. And what kind of sword hast thou? I'm going to go ahead and buy equipment. So I'm going to say, nay, 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 nay. No, oh, zero. All right. And of course, you guys know what I'm going to name my character. By Crom. All right, now, yes, 
guess since I gave myself no equipment, I do need to buy equipment. And I feel like a broadsword would be good enough. Yeah, let's go broadsword. <clears throat> Now, this is kind of interesting. There's a, a bartering system. The asking price for a broadsword is 18. I'm going to... My ego is not good, so I'm going to undershoot just a little, like 16. Will of my shields? Yes. Um, let's buy a large shield. I'll offer 13 silver. We buy new armor, yes. And Eesh, this is the hard part. Ring mail to take out a hundred silver. So I think I'm gonna stick with leather for now until I make it rich. And let's offer He's been willing to come down a bit, so let's try 27. All right, he counter-offered with 29. 28, done, okay. Yes, I want a bow. I'll offer him 10. I'll take 11. Two per silver piece, how many arrows will I buy? I'll buy about 40. If I'm not starting to break even with money by then, then that's it. I'm not going to do well. And then healing salves. I think that's the last thing I need to buy. I'll go with five. All right. Monster speed medium. I'm going to visit level 1, because even level 1 is going to kick my butt. And then, yes, my data disk is present. Okay. Art thou prepared? Okay. nervous about whether I have the right game pattern. It looks like I don't. Okay. So I actually need a pause for a second. I don't like the fact I got attacked right away. I'm going to pause for a second to figure out what's going on with my gamepad. Okay. Alright, I got the right gamepad. Um... So here we are, uh, got attacked by a skeleton right away before I was ready. This game doesn't hold your hand, it's just gonna get right up in your face. Now, um, I don't want to take too long explaining things in any particular room because wandering monsters are a thing. Um, but I am gonna go... So on the left side of the screen you'll see that I have room descriptions pulled up. So room one, which is where I am, says the smooth stone work of the passageway floor shows that advanced methods were used in its creation. A skeleton sprawls on the floor just inside the door, a bony hand still clutching a rusty dagger, outstretched toward the door to safety. A faint roaring sound can be heard from the far end of the passage. All right, now, having remapped everything to the gamepad, whoop. first there's a wandering encounter. Okay, got him. Having high strength seems to help hit and do damage. Um, so let me explain some commands. So normally V turns you around. I have it mapped to the down on my um, D-pad. Up. I have, well, okay, so movement you typically put in between 0 and 9, and that's how far your character moves. I have it that if I press up, I move 3. And then I have... 
my L1 is 6, if I want to go a little bit faster, and then my L9 is not, or excuse me, L2 is 9, so my full speed. And then um, typically you press R to turn right, so I have to have it mapped to my gamepad. R um, right in the D-pad is turning right. And then typically it's L for left, but again, gamepad. So basically all these weird complicated controls, I have just put them on my gamepad so I have more control. And I shouldn't need to lean over and do um, key commands very often. I will say, um, actually, I already kind of forgot something. I think I'm gonna make this into a mapping expedition, so. I'm going to be using uh, a screenshot function and maybe put together a map of this game. So to do that, let's see if this works. Yep. All right. So you'll see that pop up every room when I remember to do that. So we can put together a map later. All right. Room three of finely carved and painted mural fills the east wall of the passage. Opposite the opening, depicting men tilling the soil, a ransacked backpack rests under the mural. A roaring sound can be heard from the north. Now, you've probably noticed that I've been ignoring the yellow things in the ground. I think that represents the backpack. The yellow things are treasure. However, having played the first couple of rooms a couple of times, I know that it's junk. There's nothing in that backpack, so I'm just going to leave it. I don't want it weighing me down. All right, we're going to go ahead and do that. And I'm also going to be, um, I'm going to be save stating when I come back towards the dungeon entrance because pressing the wrong key when I come back can delete all of my progress. All right. And let's see, I'll go up a little bit more. And we'll go in this room over here. This is room two. There's a mosquito, so I'll kill the mosquito first before I do anything else. So it's pseudo turn based. There I just waited until I got within range. So that's crazy. The mosquito hit me for 15% damage already. I am doing a oops. I am doing a more Ouch. What on earth? I don't know what happened there, but Mosquito got some pretty good hits in on me already. Um, and then rather than waste healing cells, I'm probably going to already just leave, rest, and come back. Um, but yeah, let's take a look at this room here. Room number two. A stream runs through this natural stone chamber, a narrow landing adjacent to the corridor at the north end of the chamber allows easy access to the stream. The water flows in from a cut in the west wall and flows out under the north wall near the landing. At an alcove near one end of the landing, there are many urns and pots. The water is very clear and appears to be about three feet deep. And again, that would suggest that the treasure is a bunch of urns and pots. Um, and actually, I'll show you because if I'm going to leave, might as well pick it up and show you. Um, Come on. The guy's being a little stubborn with his movements. Come on, move. All right. And is that the... See, it says treasure number 20, trash. And I'll show you what that looks like in the manual real quick. So level one, treasure 20, nothing of value. So literally it's nothing. It's a placeholder. You just search some pots and urns and there was nothing of value in them. All right. And we got a swamp rat already. Oh, what? Sometimes the controls in this game I'd like to be shooting arrows at him. Eh, I'm just going to leave. I don't want to risk it. I'm already at 46% health. 
And there's a good chance I'll get attacked by something in this room, so... And you can see just more trash, so... I don't know if I'm quite lined up with this door. All right, and like I said, I'm going to save the game. So make sure I don't get frozen out. Okay, does not wish to re-enter the pit. Um, so if you say no, then it says does not wish to save the character. And this is where I messed up last time. So, yes. And then it kicks you back to the opening screen. Hit any key to begin. What's that restore a game in progress? This was super confusing for me as a kid and even until I started messing around. No, I don't want to restore a game in progress. Has that character already on disc? Yes. What be thy character's name? By Krom. Now rousing by Krom. And then you can see that this is the character I left off with. One reason I wanted to come back was just to check in on everything, so got 39 arrows. Uh, leather armor, large shield, five healing cells. And then he wants to sell me stuff again. I'm just gonna say no to all of his, all these things. Oops. And medium speed is good. Back to level one. And yes, data disk is present now. Having left the dungeon and come back, everything has respawned. Um, now, the enemies aren't quite like fixed as far as I can tell, but all the treasure comes back. And I think that's one of the reasons why you never find any treasure near the entrance, is that you could just farm it. Whoop. That caught me by surprise. Uh, I'm going to keep moving. All right, mosquitoes are fast, apparently. What is... Something weird going on with my attack configuration, so again, oh, oh, jeez. Does he give me a moment to look? Because right now... Okay, what I was doing was my defensive move, so you have, you have three attack moves. There's the parry, which is more defensive. And then there's the thrust, which leaves you wide open but does a lot of damage. Um, for some reason, my normal attack wasn't going off, though, so I'm going to pause for a second to figure out what's going on with that thing. Okay, well, I saw what's going on, and it has to do with how I mapped things to an analog stick, and it wasn't, I wasn't quite pushing up quite right. Um, so I'm going to... I'm going to continue, but I'm a little bit worried that I might have a similar problem with my arrows. Here's a perfect time to find out. So I have fire arrow mapped to up. Yeah, no, it's not going to work, is it? Because the analog movement is... Okay, I have to fix that. The analog stick is not precise enough for that. So, fix that real quick. Okay, I think that'll be fine. What that means is I'll have to actually reach over to hit my keyboard when I want to save. And that's fine. So I couldn't quite get all the keys I wanted onto the uh, gamepad. Alright. 
right, room eight is a passage with smooth stone floors. Excuse me, smooth stone walls and floor and a native rock ceiling. A loud roaring sound may be heard from the north. A humanoid skull rests on the floor in the middle of the passageway. And again, that's probably the treasure, and again, it's probably just junk. So we're just going to bypass it. Although we are going to save a screenshot. Theoretically. Okay. Okay, room 11. No enemy yet, so let's look at the room description. A mist, <clears throat> a mist drifts into the corridor from an opening in the west wall, and a deafening roar is heard. Moss covers the floor before the opening to the west, and a rusty sword lies on the mossy stone. Again, that's probably the junk treasure, so we're not going to worry about that much. Well, actually, I'm going to back up a second and get a cl clean screen screenshot, maybe. That'll go. All right, that works. Now, the next room over here looks like it's the same room, but the room number changes to 16. Here you find the source of the roaring sound. A stream flows into the chamber from the south across the large water wheel and plummets into a pit in the floor of the cave. The bottom of the pit cannot be seen, but experiments will indicate that it's a very long drop. These descriptions are like a dungeon master, like reading the description out loud to you. And I don't think we need another screenshot there. As long as I remember that that's room 16. All right, and into the next area. Now, my other character I tried playing with lower strength got fatigued way more easily by being weighed down with stuff. All right, room 14. A loud roaring sound may be heard from the west end of the passage. A pyramid of medium-sized stones fills one corner of the north wall at the east end of the corridor. And I'm thinking that must be the junk over there. That's the treasure. All right, again, we'll go ahead and save a screenshot. And we'll walk into this room up here. Okay, no enemy. Now, usually I've encountered a trap in this room. But I don't see, my character doesn't see anything. Let's look again. I think one of my first deaths was to a trap in this room. Yep, there it is. Ouch. And then 46% damage. That's great. But it's treasure number four, cloak. So let's take a look at that real quick. Magic cloaks. These Apshine creations are said to protect the wearer from physical injury. This protection is by no means absolute. And then number one, this says, with the exceptions of the arms and the magic books, all the magic items found in the ruins are enchanted with spells peculiar to the Apshans and lose their power permanently if they're ever taken from the complex. So here's kind of the annoying thing. I got a magic item that only works while I'm in here, but it took half my health to get it. So I think I'm already going to retreat and come back stronger. Um... Now there was a hint that there's a there's a hint what the treasure is and what the trap is if you read the room description first. Room 15 is an irregular cave of native rock. The walls and floor are covered with a heavy matting of multi-hued moss. The walls are brilliant reds, greens, and blues, while the floor is a pastel yellow. A gold excuse me, a wooden box lies topless in the middle of the cavern floor. Inside lies a well-made cloak. The material of the cloak seems to shimmer in the torchlight. So I'm going to go ahead and um, escape, come back with full health, keeping in mind there's a good chance um, I'll get attacked on the way out. So 
it's still a danger the whole way out. I also have no idea how many experience points you need before you actually level up or get stronger. And I'm not sure it even ever really tells you. Because it doesn't tell you what level you are, it just tells you how many experience points you have. But yeah, after I got... After my last playthrough where I just got murdered repeatedly, um, I think we're going to just go ahead and make sure we are playing conservatively. If we're taking a lot of hits, we're going to leave. I mean, otherwise, if you think about it, I just lost... Stuff like I used healing potions, I just lost money on this run because I haven't earned any money yet. You'll notice I'm keeping an eye on my fatigue. Going at full speed was slowing me, or was making my fatigue go down quite a bit. Now, fortunately, if you use the parry option in combat, um, it's actually pretty good for your fatigue. So if you're tired and you get attacked, you can kind of fight defensively until you're, you get your energy back. All right, let's see if we can just beeline it out of here. Oh, I hate it when they appear. I could have shot it with an arrow, but it's a mosquito. I think I can handle it. All right, so I'm fighting defensively again, but I'm able to do a heavy attack and see what happens. Yeah. With a heavy attack, I was able to hit it and one-shot it. And then open the door. And we're going to be making sure we do a quick save before we do the in-game save. I'm going to get paranoid make sure my finger's on the right key. Okay, do I wish to re-enter the pit? So again, I'm going to say no. Do you wish to save your character? Yes. And this is the only way to basically save in game and keep all your stuff. All right, so we're going to speed through the rooms that we've already explored and no, don't have anything of any value. Ugh. Shoot this guy with an arrow. All right, he's already dead, so I'm going to swing at the air. That's one thing about being sort of pseudo turn-based, is there's sometimes some input delay. All right. So yeah, theoretically, every enemy I'm killing is getting me closer to being stronger, but it's not clear to me how many enemies And then also, it's interesting, being wounded increases how much fatigue you take. So when I'm at 100% health, I can run at full speed and I only lose 1% of my fatigue. But when I was trying to escape and I had low health, that was not the story. There's actually a button for listening for monsters, but I've almost never had it be helpful. Um, I don't know if my character stats are just not good at that kind of thing. Let's see, I do want that cloak. Let's see if we can actually avoid that trap this time. Okay, so my character saw the trap. The question is, did he get rid of it? Let's find out. All 
I know in like Gateway to Abshai. All right, so I got the cloak. Gateway to Abshai, you could see traps, but you couldn't really do much about them. This, it seems like if your character sees a trap, then he removes it, maybe? All right. And we shall advance. Go a little bit faster, I think. All right, we got a mosquito. He's on top of me. Struck me. Didn't seem to do any damage, though. Okay, new room. Let's go ahead and do a screenshot. And then room 19. Small bones litter the floor of this chamber and crunch under the boots of the incautious traveler. All right, we're getting deep enough into the dungeon where it might actually start finding treasure soon. So room 18, this, the passage reeks of spoiled and rotten matter. A strip of cloth sticks out from beneath the mound of dirt in the southern portion of the passageway. I think that's junk. It's described basically as junk, but let's see. Yeah, it's just trash. All right. Make sure we screenshot. Yeah, we got a lot of different rooms in here to explore, so let's go south first. Room 21. And we've got a mosquito, so... I'll shoot it, whatever. That's kind of funny because it like takes its damage, moves, but then dies. All right, uh, room 21. The west wall of the cavern shows some marks of carving tools, but the rest is natural rock. The floor of the room is overgrown with mushrooms of two varieties. One is broad, flat caps and is white with brown splotches, while the second variety has black, tightly rounded caps. All right, um, I'm going to make sure I'm looking for traps. I don't know if there's a mushroom trap or something. Oop. Let's see. It's so hard to line up the enemies for a good shot with your bow. I don't think he's even within range. I guess he is. Um, shoot him since he moved away. Yeah, the ammon will kind of like back up, so it's a good idea to... I'm having a hard time hitting this guy. When they back up, it's a good time to shoot him with an arrow. Alright. That's one thing I do like about the ammon. Come on, turn. All right, and this one is treasure six mushrooms. Having enough to worry about at the present, you forego sampling the mushrooms for the time being and take some of each type for future examination. And then if you look in the master key, mushrooms are worth six silver. So that's it, I've earned six silver which is like, what, 12 arrows? <laughs> or not even a um, healing salve. And the weird thing is they take up a lot of weight. Okay. All right, we got a skeleton to appear.
I had to shoot him with an arrow. And that killed him. Okay. Um, let's go up from here. And we can see what room 20 is. The walls of the room are covered with algae. Most of the algae is black and rotten, but the few remaining brown patches have a nutty aroma and, if tasted, are reminiscent of spiced bread. Okay, we're going to be advancing carefully, looking for traps, like is there poison algae or something? Alright, hopefully my character would have seen something by now. Treasure 5, Food Algae. That's number 5. The aroma of the plant overcomes your better judgment and you taste a bit of it. It is delicious and builds strong bodies 12 ways. And then down here it says 5 silver pieces. So, I'm now up to, what, 11 from this run? Okay, as always, I can't line up a good shot with the Swamp Rat. I need a heavy hit. Let's see if I can kill him in one hit. Yes, I got him. Okay. Now, let's do our screenshot. And I think we'll go a little bit further in, and then... No, we're still at full health, but we'll go a little bit further in and keep mapping as we go. Yeah, now I have more weight. I am getting more tired the faster I go. All right, room 17. I think I am going to go ahead and screenshot so I can see where the treasure is. And what does room 17 say? Only the floor has been smoothed in this chamber. The walls and ceiling have been left in the natural state. The air smells of decaying vegetable matter. A small amount of stones against the west wall and the north end of the passage partially blocks away to the north. Okay. Don't know what all that means, but let's head up that way and check out. Oh. Didn't see it at first. All right. Killed another enemy. All right, some more trash. Let's go up this way. Room 23. And again, the room descriptions give you a hint of what you might encounter. So the native rock walls of the room are covered with algae. Most of the algae is black and rotten, but the remaining brown patches have a nutty scent and taste like spice bread. The exoskeleton of a huge ant lies in the middle of the chamber. Again, I'm looking for traps because I keep describing this black and rotten algae. But so far, I've not encountered anything. All right, some more food algae. So what was that? Another five silver. Not exactly the best treasure in the world. But if I were patient enough to just keep farming it, I guess I could start building up some money.
currently in a medium pace is recovering one fatigue per step. All right, let's take another, let's take another screenshot. Room 22 says, this cavern is also overgrown with the same types of mushrooms as are found in room 21. A skeleton lies among the mushrooms, still clutching the remnants of a sack. All right. Again, we're going to be looking for traps. All right, what we got? All right, more mushrooms, so... If I did my math, that's 22 silver we earned on this trip. That's like 44 arrows, man. I think I'm going to pop my head into the next room and see kind of what we're looking at, but between getting weighed down and just not wanting to push my luck, I think I'm going to be turning back pretty soon here. All right, room 56. Shoot this guy. One thing I've not been doing a good job of is looking for secret doors. The fact that we jump so many room numbers makes me a little bit weirded out. Room 56 is the last one. It is a passage with rough stone walls and floor and a native granite ceiling. The south wall of the passage is faced with smooth square stones near the far end. While the floor and other walls are of rough stone, a foul musky odor fills the air and a thin layer of moss coats the floor at the extreme end of the passage. Okay. Yeah, I can't... I don't think I screenshot it yet, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to keep going a little bit more here. All right, room 24. I think it's pretty neat how they have the um, treasure hidden in the wall there, kind of. Room 24 is a mossy carved stone landing. The air is very humid and smells of damp and mold. A slime-covered sack rests against the eastern wall of the landing. All right. Look for traps. Okay. Shoot that guy. All right, he's dead. Oh, it look like the trap's disappearing. An approach carefully. My hope is that I'm going around the trap. Yeah, I don't like how close I am to that. Oh, interesting. Actually leads to the next room. Room 25, a stagnant pond fills the south end of the carved stone chamber with a narrow landing at the south end. White mold covers the surface of the water save the southeast corner where a gold-colored seaweed is in evidence. Tests will reveal the water to be three feet deep, but the bottom of the pool cannot be seen through the murk. All 
I'm getting more and more paranoid as I've lived this long. All right, treasure number seven is kelp. Having spent some time up and down the coast, you know of several varieties of useful seaweed, so you take some along. So five silver piece. Okay. And then I'm going to inch myself up into the wall. Okay, so that's as close to the wall as I can get. Oh, interesting. Okay. Can I get that treasure? It's just trash. Okay, I don't get the slime colored covered bag. All right, but I did not get hit by the trap yet. All right, can't remember if I screenshotted. So let's do that. Mosquito attack. Shoot it with an arrow. And it's dead. Okay, so the, the gamepad idea is far from perfect. Because sometimes... I need to move a little bit slower and have it only mapped to the speeds of 3, 6, and 9. Alright, we got some more kelp. So this suggests to me that there's a secret door somewhere that I missed. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and retreat. And then I'll have to do another... Oh boy. Oops, 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 oops. All right, kill the Ant-Man. Kill like 11 enemies. I hope I get some experience. Um, I forgot to read the room description. A shallow pond fills most of the room. The surface of the water is covered with a white mold, except in the northeast corner where a clump of golden brown seaweed is visible. Okay, and that was the treasure I picked up. So anyway, I'm going to get out of here, save my character... Um, enjoy the fact I actually made some money, and then I'm going to have to come back and look for secret doors because there's something I'm missing. And I think as I do with my little mapping project, I think that might help. For example, well, that was lucky. Room 56 already had one. Should actually screenshot that for my mapping project. But I am going to... I am still going to get out of here before I get in trouble. My medium speed is actually making my fatigue go down by one. As I'm carrying a lot of weight. I'm carrying around a lot of seaweed and mushrooms for some reason. Oh. <laughs> the sound gets messed up if you cause the game to load while the sound is going. I would have fought the Ant-Man, but... I had already pressed move before he appeared. Okay, moving at a slow speed and my fatigue is going back up. I'm just going to wait for him to get closer. Crunch. 
I killed it with one parrying blow, so that's nice. Yeah, but if I go at my full speed, I'm kind of too, too way down, I think. Let's try it. Yeah, I go down a whole 6% if I go full speed. That's one thing that me as a kid had a hard time with. It was like, it's kind of boring waiting for my character to like take a few steps and rest and recover. Of course, usually as a kid, I would do, I'd get bored and give myself straight 18 stats and still not know what the heck I was doing. <laughs> I can do a, yeah, if I go full speed and then slower and then full speed and then slower, I can kind of do a stutter step and that's, it's a little bit more bearable. Well, as I'm on my way out, I can start doing my little final wrap up for this video. Um, oh, hey, whoop, here comes the swamp rat. It's going to say, I think remapping the controls is overall a very good thing. Um, yeah, I still need to reach over and press keys now and then, but there's a lot less of that. Um, I do, I think the remake Temple of Apshai trilogy might have already done some of these quality of life improvements, but I'm more about exploring the original version that came out at the time. So that's kind of why I'm doing this. All right, and again, I'm going to save state before I walk through that door. Okay, make sure that they save my game properly. So, no, save character, yes, and that puts us back at the title screen. I'm going to pause because I don't particularly like that, I can't even call it music, but that background noise. So I'll pause it there. So yeah, I think, I think remapping to the gamepad made the game more playable. Um, might also be wor worth looking into the Temple of Abshai trilogy to see if there's some quality of life improvements there that's worth it. Um, I also would recommend either just cheating and going all 18 stats, or at the very least, roll up a character like modern D&D. &D. Um, as far as I can tell, if you tell this game to roll up a character, it's just rolling three six-sided dice. And because I've seen stats as low as three when I rolled. And that's statistically almost impossible if you're using roll four dice and drop the lowest. It's possible, but an insanely low chance. Um, so yeah, I would at the very least roll your stats using a more modern stat rolling method. Give yourself some decent money, like 200 silver. And then... Um, play the game conservatively. Imagine like you're a level one character, like a level one fighter, because you don't have any magic or anything. And yeah, you go fight a couple enemies and then you get out and you rest and then you come back. Um, but if you play it that way, I can see the, the appeal of it. Um, and I can't remember if I said this already in the previous clip of the video, but this was a really interesting, um, point in the evolutionary path of Western RPGs, all of the ones up until this point, um, like if you looked on the TRS-80, 
uh, they were all trying to be like D and D clones. You had six stats. They were rolled on three six sided dice, all that stuff. Um, but they were all text based for the most part or really not very good graphics. This one kind of went to the next level of having a visual dungeon. And it was very much like playing a cross between classic, like, what do they call that? The, um, old school retro, is that OSR? Like the old school D&D and say like a choose your own adventure book and then a computer game because the computer is resolving all of the combat for you. Um, really interesting experience. I think I'm going to keep playing, but I don't know if I'm going to keep recording or not. Um, this is a pretty intensive project. I, this video already looks like it's going to be like an hour long. Um, it's going to take, take a lot of editing because I was fumbling around with the keyboard a lot and I don't want to show all that, but so I don't know if I'm going to keep recording, but I did want to include this as part of my series on old retro games that have weird controls that could be improved with modern improvements. And I think this definitely fits the bill and it's a really interesting game to me. So anyway, hope you enjoy. See you next time.